In today's show, it's all about e-bikes. Now, it's everything from tiny folders to mighty all-terrain machines packing a pretty serious punch. Mm. So let us know which is your favorite down in the comments section below. So we'll kick off with the best electric bike, shall we? Yeah. We'll be showing the top five from the category today. Otherwise, we might be here a very long time. But you can find our full list over on the Road to Sea website. We'll leave a link down in the description below. And as with all of our editorial content, this video isn't sponsored by any of the brands featured. So you can trust that this is our honest opinion to help better inform you for your next purchase. If you can, then please make sure you subscribe to the channel as it really does help us out. And you don't want to miss out on the rest of our awards videos, do you? No, coming over the next days and weeks. So kicking off our best e-bikes is Rally's lightest e-bike yet in the number five spot. The Trace is a great sporty option and the brand's first foray into the well-regarded e-bike motion hub system that's been spec on hybrids and uh, e-road bikes. During the review period, the Trace felt fast and responsive on tarmac, and it could easily be pressed into service for a bit of lightweight bike packing, yeah, if that's definitely. your thing. Yeah. Now, it is possible to find e-bikes that are more powerful than this, isn't yeah, it? Definitely. But we reckon that you'll be hard pressed to find a system as smooth and as efficient as this e-bike motion rear hub motor. So you get three power levels, and they're graded nicely with a decent push up steepish hills in the top level. Although the lack of torque on the steepest gradients is apparent, but then any e-bike really does have its work cut out when it comes for testing here in Bath, doesn't it? Yes, it does. Some <laughs> steep hills, although obviously with a hub motor, the motors move more slowly and they tend not to be as good when it gets really steep as a, as a mid motor. But the e-bike motion system provides assistance when required, but also performs with relatively little motor resistance when switched off and it's mm. light. So, when your speed ex exceeds 16 miles an hour or when you just don't need it, uh, you can just turn it off. In terms of range, you'll get well over 30 miles between chargers in hilly terrain. That's a decent commute, That's isn't it? a decent it? commute. Yeah. The eBike Motion X35 system uses a small, light, geared rear hub motor that's virtually hidden behind that mm -hmm. nine-speed cassette, with all the motion sensing also neatly integrated into the motor and cassette combo. Now, the stealthy look is completed by the top tube button, which again, does a great job of hiding the fact that this is an e-bike at all. We yeah. certainly fooled a few people on <laughs> some commutes, didn't we? <laughs> we certainly did. And you know, if you didn't know it was an e-bike and you weren't looking for it, you, you wouldn't notice. Nah. And all of that is built into a system which is only 16.5 kilograms, which is quite impressive. That is good for a full e-bike, isn't it? Mm. Now, in terms of build, you get Tektro R280 flat mount hydraulic disc brakes and a Shimano Olivier 9... Olivier... <laughs> Again, 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 <laughs> again. In terms of build, you get Tektro's R280 flat mount hydraulic discs. You get a Shimano Olivio 9-speed derailleur, 11 to 34 cassette. Uh, those are good quality. And despite the lightweight, sporty features, the Trace comes with what Rally calls an off-road light package. So you get um, Karana alloy mud guards, you get a low-profile pannier rack, and you get good front and rear LED lights hardwired to the main battery. So you have nice. to remember charging them. Brilliant. Now, if you like riding bikes in a sporty way and to get some exercise, then we reckon you'll absolutely love the Trace. It's fun, fast, practical, and performs well off-road on canal towpaths or forest roads, for example. Yeah, absolutely. Now, e-bikes is an area of the cycling industry that is growing and is set to grow quicker than any other. And as such, in 2022, we actually reviewed more e-bikes than ever before, both on Road CC and also over on the sister site e-bike tips. Yeah. However, the Quick Haul P9 is by no means the first term we've reviewed, is it? Nope. And we liked a hell of a lot of them. Yeah. So it is, however, the cheapest turn and well-deserving of our acclaimed number four spot. I've ridden a lot of turns. <laughs> I rode in on one today. In Perfect. GSD, very nice. Now, this is a really easy bike to get on with. And if you're looking to replace car journeys uh, with bike journeys, just like I do when I'm coming in on with GSD, <laughs> then it makes a solid case for your cash. If you want turns famous versatility at a decent price point, then this is a really well-considered entry-level model. Hmm. And that price means that this will appeal to a wider range of riders and puts it in a straight fight with a lot of standard city bikes. Hmm. A fight that is well-equipped to win. Yeah, absolutely. Now, the quick haul is Turn's attempt to bring cargo biking to the masses, effectively. And it's broadly successful, we'd say here, wouldn't we? Yeah, absolutely. The bike can carry 150 kilograms in total, which yeah. is pretty decent. And the Atlas Q rear rack can take 50 kilograms just by itself. Yeah. So the rack is bolted onto the frame and there's plenty of capacity for a child in a seat or a bigger kid using one of the other rear mounted Yeah, you options. can just get like a pad to sit on, basically. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. You can carry me around. All right. Point. Yeah, there's a double <laughs> mount point on the head tube too, which allows you to fit turns hauler or transporter racks up front and you can get up to 20 kilos on the front of the bike as well. That's a good shop, isn't it? That's a good crate, that, isn't it? <laughs> of a, of large beer. beers. Yeah. yeah. So in the rear rack is designed to work with turns excellent cargo hold 37 panniers and it uses a four point top mounting system that takes plenty of the stuff that turn already makes for all the other bikes. Yeah, which is great. You've got any kind of thing you want to carry. There is a lot of choice. Can. Yeah. For power, the quick haul relies on a Bosch performance line cruise motor that provides up to 65 Newton meters of torque. While Shimano provides again, a nine speed Olivio group uh -huh. set, just like on the rally. Mm. That's good stuff, isn't it? Yeah, it must be. Yeah. Now, as big fans as we are, even we must admit that this isn't necessarily a bike that you can buy to replace a car. But once you've got one, you'll soon realise that it can take over a huge range of shorter car journeys and be more fun in the process. Yeah, I mean, it might, might not replace your main car, but it might replace your second car. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And the other benefit is it doesn't take up as much space as a car. No, because you can stand it on its end in the corner of the room. Really you can't do that design. with a car, can you? Not at all. <laughs> So we're into the top three and the 10 way CGO 600 is a slick single speed city e-bike that's very much in the modern European style. And it comes with a super competitive price. Yeah, now the 10 ways boasts a lightweight alloy frame and it's got a rear hub motor with a diameter as small as that of an eight speed hub gear. So, you know, small. really quite small. There are currently two frame sizes, medium and large, uh, and 10 ways says that an extra large is gonna be added to provide options for a suggested height range of 1.65 to 1.95 meters, so most people. And you can ride one as well. Yeah, because so, I'm really tall, aren't I? Yeah, you are. So did you know that the 250 watt hour battery that lives inside that down tube features Samsung cells? Yeah, it's good. And there's just the right amount of power from the MyVice, Mavice. Oh, I you know we'll go with MyVice. Yeah, MO70 motor, at each of the three preset levels. And it's all perfectly married to a double-sided torque sensor. Uh, which makes the motor respond to the pressure from the crank, not just the wheels turning around. So the harder you push, the more power you get. It is a very sophisticated feeling ride, especially for the money. Hmm. Now, level one gives a small but perfectly proportionate surge of power, while levels two and three give nicely graduated increases. The latter providing a real boost that is useful up steeper hills, especially if you're starting to get jelly legs. In terms of range, you'll get over 30 miles of you know, stop start riding over moderately rolling terrain um, using level one and on a much hillier ride with plenty of like, you know, 10% gradients and the, maybe some stuff in your panniers and using <laughs> levels two and three regularly, 20 miles, probably more realistic range. Still not bad. So it might not get you up ultra steep climbs, but it's quick on the more moderate hills. In general, it's a bike that rewards a bit more human input than many of the other designs, as is the case with most single speeds. Yeah, absolutely. The 10 ways is nice to ride without the power on too, and the Gates belt drive doesn't feel too different from you know, a regular chain drive. Mm. Again, you're getting hydraulic disc brakes, which perform very well, and you get hardwired LED front light, which gives good visibility at night. Unfortunately, you don't get a rear one, you have to stick one of those on. Well, with its small but wonderfully performing motor, this simple to operate single speed is ideal for commuting moderate distances. Yeah, it's great. The runner up spot goes to the Reza and Muller Super Delight Mountain Roll Off, which is a touring e mountain bike that's built around a practical frame design with a superbly integrated Bosch motor. And you get twin batteries with this one. It's got a whopping 1,125 watt hours when you put the two together. Not bad. That is a yeah. lot. And you get a 14 speed roll off hub gear. You get the option of a rear and a front rack. You get water bottle mounts, you get brake lights, you get front full beam lighting. There's a lot going on. There is. There's a lot going on with it. Anyway, that Bosch Performance Line CX motor provides the power, whilst the Fox Float 36 Performance Fork offers 150 mil of travel. And you get plush tunable rear travel as well. That's 140 mil at the rear. Not bad, yeah. You get a Fox Float DPS Performance Unit there. And all of that combined with the incremental increase in torque available from the latest Bosch mid drives mm. means that the Super Delight is without doubt the most capable off-roader in Riesa and Muller's pretty extensive stable of e-bikes. Mm. They make a lot of e-bikes. <laughs> Well, it's a good job they've got one in the top five then. Yeah, maybe, absolutely. Anyway, the Super Delight Mountain ate up every incline we put in front of it, no matter how steep or difficult. There's four power levels on offer and each is super responsive to pedal pressure. Now, no matter how technical the terrain, just leave it in the E mountain bike mode and keep pedaling and the onboard software will do everything else. Yeah, it's really clever at responding to what you're doing on the bike. Mm. Super good. 
Our particular review bike came with a 14-speed roll-off E14 electronically shifting hub gear Ooh. and a Gates carbon belt drive. And that system offers really low maintenance for a start, but also a huge 526% gear range. I haven't done the maths, but that's more than most bikes I ride. It's more than most bikes. Yeah. And one neat feature that I really like is the multi-shift mode, which simultaneously shifts three gears at a time. Yeah, that's really good. And there's also that auto downshift function where you're always in a mm. low gear at the start. So it's good if you stop at the lights or you yeah. stop at the bottom of a climb or something. Yeah, it's really useful. Really useful. Other aspects of the bike are almost uniformly excellent. So powerful and progressive braking from Magura hydraulic disc brakes, free running Schwalbe tubeless ready tires, fantastically effective supermover lighting, and that includes the full beam facility at the front and a very useful Post X Fusion Manic 100 dropper post. Yep. Which does what it sounds like. All the stuff on this bike. Now, unless you have very, very deep pockets, the less good news is that the price tag for our build, you can build it up in any way you like really, is £9,339. That's going to hurt, isn't it? But this does start at the slightly lower price of 7609 It's probably not low enough for me. <laughs> it's not cheap, but <laughs> it is very good. If you can handle the price, this is a hugely capable bike. One of the very few EMTBs that will allow you to tour the country or a continent, or the whole world off road, mm. safe charger with you. Also, one of the very few e-mountain bikes that's gonna make it into roads easy. Yeah. <laughs> In fact, the only one. Mm. I don't give the game away. <laughs> right then, drum roll please, as it's time to announce our first category winner of 2023. Yeah, and it is the MyRider 1GB3. Now, of all the e-bikes we reviewed in 2022, our overall favorite is this one, the MyRider 1GB3, which is a funky looking fold in half magnesium uh, bike with an integrated but removable battery, um, mid-frame elastomer suspension, adjustable height handlebars, and seat posts and three gears. This is quite simply a great all-round performer for shorter commutes and leisure rides. If everyone had one of these, we'd be a long way closer to trafficless cities. Absolutely. My rider have been making this bike for a while as a single speed, but now it's got a three-speed FNEO GTRO gear unit, which is housed within- That's catchy. I know, housed <laughs> within the chain wheel body, not the wheel and it manages to get a planetary gear set up into a space only around 50 millimeter deep. That's impressive. Yep, and with a diameter the same as a medium sized chain ring. So it's a pretty miraculous bit of engineering really. It's a nice bit of kit. In terms of operation, you have a twist grip with three gear points to click between, i.e. simplicity itself and a cracking little hub motor provides, well, all the power. All the power you need. Now the biggest bonus of not going down the derailleur path is that by maintaining a single chain line, my rider has been able to fit a belt drive, meaning mm. just like on a few of the previous bikes, there's no oil to get on your clothes uh, and there's no regular maintenance. And for commuting, that is yes. worth its weight in gold. It really is, isn't it? How many times have you rocked up to the office with like oil all up your jeans? Plenty enough. Plenty of times. Yeah, I need a my rider. Over moderately hilly terrain, we got over 35 miles from the small 252 watt hour battery when ridden mainly in the lower power levels and without using the throttle to give a power boost up the steeper sections. Yeah. Now this meant that it was a decent amount of moderate exercise, but the small Bafang motor certainly took the sting out of the climbs and on the flat and downhills, it provided a nice bike to ride with the power turned off. Yeah, I mean, it's not the most powerful motor you can find, mm. but it's certainly a useful bit of extra mm. uh, grunt up the hills. And definitely. when you're not using it, you don't want drag, do you? No, absolutely not. Now, it's possible to get such impressive mileage because even at the lowest assistance level, the power keeps on coming right up to the assist cutout limit of around 16 miles an hour. Despite its appearance as a fun and funky little folder, the GB3 is actually a really nice bike to ride too, mm. um, if you just want a workout with just enough assistance to make the exercise a pleasure rather than a pain. That's what we all want. <laughs> That's what it? we like. Now, the gears also help you get the most out of the system. In third, you can push the GB3 along unassisted at about 20 mile an hour, mm. I reckon. Yeah. Second is fine for most hills, and the first means that the bike can climb <laughs> just about anything you put in front yeah, of it. Yeah, for three really. gears, it's got a decent range. Yeah, it really does, yeah. yeah. So, And then you've got the Gemma hydraulic disc brakes. They're smooth and powerful and superior in stopping power to just about anything else we've tried on, on a 16 inch wheel bike at least. Yeah. Now this bike gets an all new full color LCD display. It's really crisp and clear. It's pretty legible, mm. even in the sunlight. Um, it doesn't overwhelm you with information, but it gives you, you know, helpful standard metrics like, like your what? max speed and your average speed and your 
they are your battery useful. level things like that hmm. now, the gb3 undercuts a lot of the competition in terms of price add on that two-year guarantee and the uk factory and dealer network and it's clear that my rider has come up with well a winner a winner <laughs> so there you have it five truly stunning e-bikes that were all an absolute pleasure to ride and review which I wish was always the case with everything that we reviewed. We've had some crap ones. We <laughs> have had a few, but you know, these ones were good. So there's that. Now, obviously many of these bikes would make excellent commuters. And as such, they have made our long list over on the Road CC website. But make sure you stay tuned to this channel to see our top five commuting bikes coming very soon. Yeah, thanks for watching. If you've got any questions about any of these bikes, ask them down in the comments below. We'll try and answer them for you. We're not that knowledgeable. <laughs> but we might be able to find it out. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more like this on Road CC. And then one neat feature that I quite like is that multi-shift mode, mm. which can shift three gears simultaneously. Yeah, that's really good. Why is it good? Because while the auto... <laughs> don't just say it's good. <laughs>